Good morning. Welcome to the virtual broadcast of the St. James Baptist Church. This is a church where God is exalted, the name of Jesus lifted, and the body of Christ is edified. We thank you so kindly for joining us this morning as we seek to celebrate life and celebrate Christ. Let us give our attention now to that of prayer and scripture. The scripture reads on this last, this morning we are reading from Malachi, uh, the third chapter, verses one through four. Malachi, the third chapter, verses one through four. Are the Old Testament scriptures and it reads on this wise. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you see, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a full of soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. The end of the reading. The, the New Testament reading is Philippians 3, 1 through 11. And it reads on this slide. Philippians 3, 1 through 11. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same thing to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concisions. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might have, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I know, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is the law, Language. But the things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. The end of the reading. As I've already, as I've already stated, better said, we have many people and many things to pray for. And so this morning, as we go to prayer, we want to remember first of all uh, some families who lost loved ones. We want to remember the Graham and the Hampton family, the Connors family, uh, the Mance family. Pray that God give them all and all of joy and God and praise for the days of mourning and bereavement. And then we want to remember the whole people of the St. James Baptist Church. And especially we lift up those who are having health challenges uh, in a very, very a cute way, we ask for Heavenly Father that you would uh, bless uh, Sister Faye Holland, bless Sister Valerie Griffin, bless Sister Alicia O'Neill, and we pray, Lord God, that you bless Sister Marilyn Johnson, pray that you bless Sister Janice Johnson, bless Sister Janice Stroyd, bless uh, Reverend Beth Whitey, and bless her son Martell, uh, bless Brother Aaron Hart, bless Pastor Eddie Jones. Uh, we pray, God, again, oh Lord God, that you would bless uh, Sister Barbara Eddy. And we pray, O oh, Father, that you would bless Sister Geraldine McGowan. We pray that you would bless Sister Wilhelmina Harder, Brother Keith Harder, Olivia, and that you would give them family mercies and grace. Pray that you would bless Brother Rodney Hampton, and Sister Brenda Hampton. Uh, pray that you would bless the remaining family members of Mr. Jose Martinez. And the list goes on. For the name that I failed to call, um, 
we ask the Lord God, you know. Yes. You know all about us, you know about whereabouts, you know about rising, you know about downstream. Yes. You know whether we're sitting in darkness, you know whether we're standing in the light. You know. Yes. You know who we are, you know where we are. Yes. And you know how we are. Yes. So we pray, O oh Lord God, that as you seek to bless this worship experience this day, as you seek to bless the whole people of the St. James Baptist Church, as we lift up all of the sick and the infirm, we ask even now that they might experience you in the fullness of your grace yeah. and the healing power of your love. Yeah. Even yeah. those who do not have health challenges, yeah. but have yeah. issues of life that confront them and perplex them, we yeah. ask even now yeah. Yeah. be with us. Yeah. Even now, yeah. be with them. Even now, that you will touch, that you will heal, that you will pray, that you will fix our minds and spirits in such a way that we can keep our minds stayed on you. Yeah. And we, we shout that we count it all joy to know that if we keep our minds stayed on you, yeah. you will keep us in perfect peace. Yeah. Uh, we are so happy this morning to be in the sanctuary to stand before you, Lord God. To stand before your people, to stand with your people, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And as we've already proclaimed that we all need to get ready, people. Get ready for the coming of the Lord. So this morning, as we ready ourselves to continue our sacred journey, yes. we are mindful of our duty and our responsibility and our accountability to our brothers and our sisters. And for this reason, yes, before we came, for this reason, before we shout them, yes. we intercede on their behalf, yes. that you would have your way with them, and that you would, that you would so infuse your spirit, and your joy, and your peace, and your Holy Ghost power within them. In a mighty way in this day, give you thanks. Let's now, for the purpose of the service, that all that we might say seem proclaiming to you, exalt you, God, we the name of Jesus and the whole people of the same thing that we trust. God shall be edified, shall be in light. In the blessed name of Jesus, teach us how to be that blessing. All those that be encountered and embraced in all our saints.
don't know how to live your love be made manifest in the book of there. That all the people will speak Jesus. Speak to us, speak through us. For we are waiting on
This video was making me very, very anxious and very bad. But if you knew that you recently entered a national competition on behalf of your school, you might become very excited at the thought that perhaps you had won the grand prize and the principal was coming over to make the big announcement in person. Now, in most scenarios, the visitor would be the very same person. But your situation would determine whether this person visit would be lovely or ugly. Now, by now, however, you may be wondering, why am I talking about this seeing on the lectionary passage from Luke 1 to face the usual Psalm for Advent 2? never once mentioned the word visit. But that's true of only the English translation. In the original Greek of Zechariah's song, a very interesting word meaning to visit crops up twice. First in verse 68, and then again in verse 78. Zechariah is singing about a divine visit of momentous proportion. A visit his son, John will prepare the world to receive in the right way. The Greek word he uses is loaded with grace. This very same word is used at other times to describe the way someone might visit a lonely person or a widow in distress. Glory to God, this is a healing kind of visit. In other words, this is a type of visit motivated by an awareness that Someone is hurting, and so you want to see if you can help. Yes, God is building this work with a deep seated desire to help us. But the question is are we ready to receive this visit in the right way? Because no matter how well motivated, a given visit might be. Maybe the person receiving it needs to be in the right frame of mind. Yeah. Now, some of y'all uh, might be sleeping on this yeah. by being in the right frame of mind. Yeah. And you think you're together like a tough piece of leather 24 7, 8 days a week. Yeah. But I declare to you, every now and then, you face the things can so affect you that you sometimes wonder where your mind is. Of what frame of mind you were in. Oh, I remember as a boy here, my mama, God bless her memory. I was calling her for something as a child, and somebody else was calling her for something as a child, and somebody else was calling on her for something as an adult, and I hear said, I'm going to go somewhere and change my name. So I can find me a piece of mind. Come over, they come over, no more than three days a week. 
the same thing. And when I don't take all the box, go check my list, sometimes I forget me. And I'm often reminded by my wife, take a list with you to the store. And I'll say, I don't need a list. We just go long hours doing the ads and preparing for business and office. We bake cookies, cake, we buy our favorite drinks, eggnog, wine, and whatever your favorite drink is. <laughs> we wash the sheets on the guest bed, purchase gifts for our grandchildren and friends who, who will be coming for a visit. But how much thought or time or energy do we devote to that one visit hall? Without whom there would be no holiday in the first place. Yes, right. It is still true that Jesus is the reason for the season. Yes, 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 yes. But perhaps this still seems off the mark to you. You might point out, for instance, that the reason we don't think of Jesus as a visitor is because he is a resident in our heart all the time. For instance, when your wife or husband comes home from work each evening or when your children get off the school bus, you don't seem to see them as visitors because they live in that house. So also with our Lord. For those of us who believe in him all the time anyway, it's difficult to view Jesus on a par with Uncle Joe or Aunt Mary from New York who visit just once a year. And true enough, there is something to that line of thought. Nevertheless, I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that seeing Jesus as a kind of holy visitor might help us cut through the layers of familiar holiday routine so that we can get back to the core of agony. Because all too often, we forget the biblical idea that the incarnation of God's only Son was a kind of invasion of this world. Those of you who remember the language of the King James Version of the Bible know that you could often read verses about God visiting the iniquity of evil people and of God visiting the transgression of the wicked with punishment. When Jesus paid his ultimate visit to the world, the true meaning of visit was very much on display. Depending on who a given person was and how he or she received Jesus, the Lord's visit could result in either great joy or great sorrow. Yet over the centuries, even the church has allowed the message of Advent to become mostly about joy at the expense of judgment. Zachariah's song, there's a lot of talk about salvation, but there's also some talk about punishment for God's enemies. Glory to God, you may sing, joy to the world, the Lord has come. But we need to face up to the fact that there are any number of people in this world who actually find no joy at all in the Christian message. They hate it, in fact. And they don't want this Jesus to be called their Lord in any sense. That's why all four Gospels talk about John the Baptist and his fiery message of repentance. Two of the four Gospels do not mention Jesus in person at all. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all recognize that no gospel would be complete without John the Baptist. A gospel may skip Christmas, but it may not skip John. How so, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Because as Zechariah knew you already, when John was just eight days old, John was going to be the necessary advance man to get the world ready to receive Jesus. If Jesus was the one who would plant the mustard seed of the kingdom in the soil of this world, then John was to be the one 
who did the hard work of plowing the soil to get ready for that planting. God would be the one who would sink down and plow in into human hearts. There was a spiritual equipment of a parched field whose dirt had long ago hardened into something resembling concrete. If Jesus was God's divine visitor to this world, then John was the one who was sent to prepare the way. Yes. Praise God and hallelujah. Yes. Because God and John the Baptist knew that as with my analogy earlier about the vision from the school principal, so was the vision of God's Son, how the vision would be received with very much depend on people's situation. If they were eager to hear the good news that God's tender mercy were available to forgive their sins, then they'd be glad to hear that message from the lips of Jesus. But if people didn't think they had a problem with sin, then the vision of God's Son would be merely annoying and a waste of their time. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, I don't know if you know it or are aware of it, but there are a whole lot of people in the world, in North America, South America, in Europe, Asia, and in Africa, all around the globe. A whole lot of people in America, in South Carolina, in Richmond, in Lexington County, who think, who believe, who feel, that they don't have a problem with sin. Uh -huh. Am I right about it? Yeah. Where the God says that it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understands it. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all going out of their way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that do it good. No, not one. The throat is an open support. With the tongue they have used deceit, the poison of ass is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Yet, all have sinned and continue to fall short, continue to come short of the glory of God. In other words, we all stand in need of a Savior. We all stand in need of God's mercy. We all stand in need of God's grace. We all stand in need of the Lord. But we are justified feeling. By his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Oh, praise God and hallelujah. You know this, hymn, 661, for that awful day will surely come. The appointed hour makes sense. And I will stand before my judge and pass the solemn test. And glory to God, you better hear me. You better get off of your high horse and off of yourself in the sight and presence of the most high God. If I'm too high, Lord, bring me down. If I'm too low, Lord, raise me up. If I'm too far away, Lord, draw me nearer. Thou art the sinner's friend, as such I look to me, now in the fullness of thy love. O oh Lord, remember me. Remember thy pure word of grace. Remember Calvary. Remember all thy dying groans, and then remember me. Lord, I am guilty. I am found. But thyself. 
about the Holy Spirit talking. Yes, yes. But the world, and family also the church, too often mm -hmm. tries to celebrate mm -hmm. is the arrival of God son in our world, mm -hmm. yet without letting John the Baptist come first. Mm -hmm. As I told you about the order of service, there is an order. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 you just don't do things in your family. Yes,
we want to celebrate that with you and encourage you in your sacred journey.
peace of the Lord, and that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This is the remembrance of me. After the same man also he took the cup, and he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye you show the Lord's death till he come. So thank you all of Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like, and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. Mm -hmm. 